quiz are amazing. This is one smart quiz that's happened, and it has made so many things redundant. Your cassette players, your CD players, uh, your diary, your uh, recorders, your cameras, your note pads, all of them are gone. And so the mobile phone is not just someone to pick up and call, but it's gone much way beyond that. As pharma marketers, there could be no better time to be present, to look at challenges. Because the amount of innovation, the amount of opportunity that this time is throwing is amazing. This is a device which, uh, can, which, which is called Diabetum and it enters into a glucometer. And from the glucometer, it wirelessly transfers the data into your smartphone. It creates a graph about your eating and correlates your, gluco, your diabetes readings with what you eat, with your nutrition. And from there, you could just kind of SMS to your doctor, send it wirelessly, put it on WhatsApp, or can send it via email. You can also add notes, sync, and so many opportunities that's available. And this is an amazing thing that these guys have done. And this is right here in Mumbai. So these are immense possibilities. It's just about thinking. Because everyone, every consumer, every patient who's down there is, is connected somewhere, can send out data, and integrating that data together and giving them a feedback is possible. Because how you look at things, uh, healthcare is changing at a rapid pace, India is changing at a rapid pace. Uh, the shift, uh, like uh, in one of the slides you mentioned, is going from the doctors to the patient. Can we look at things differently? Or still, or do we still believe that we are just a pill maker? Or are we just a drug manufacturer? Can we look beyond that? Can we look at emotions? This slide maps what I feel the future of uh, the healthcare paradigm will look like. At, the, at its intersection, uh, we see the collaboration between healthcare professionals and patients and the way that the industry can involve itself. So, for me, the future of digital pharma marketing is at the intersection of patient and provider need. Successful digital marketing, in my opinion, will focus on affording the industry the opportunity to build trust in its work indirectly by means of its manifesting its presence on a daily basis in environments where its customers spend their time, maintaining an open and approachable disposition and being the authoritative voice on its own products. Today, we have redefined what marketing is and what marketing does. But in order to succeed, pharma companies will need to redefine marketing as a set of competencies built around informing and conversing with customers across digital and physical environments, rather than promoting product messages through multiple channels, albeit in an approved form. As care becomes co-created between patients and their care teams, as we were hearing in the panel this morning, so the conveying of marketing messages to healthcare professionals is no longer the priority of pharma digital marketers. Again, this is all in my opinion. Rather, pharma digital marketing will need to shift, I feel, towards serving patient need and helping healthcare professionals serve patient need. So the future of pharma digital marketing will be indirect rather than direct. Pharma will need to show, not to tell, to manifest its subject authority about its own products indirectly through the proactive support that it provides for patients and healthcare professionals. The future of digital pharma marketing will be driven by what needs to be done, not by what pharma is prepared to do. This isn't, of course, something which can realistically be undertaken in isolation and will need to be supported by a refocusing of strategic objectives at an operational level. Easy to say, difficult to do, absolutely necessary. As the architects of change, farmers senior management will need to advocate and need the necessary reforms. Your senior managers need your help. If this doesn't sound like existing states of affairs within your company, and it may well not do, then an urgent conversation is waiting to be had around why such activities are going to be critical to the enterprise's
future success, because everyone's interested in that. Successful pharma digital marketers will understand when, why, how, and where their communities want to connect with them. They will define and measure their success by means of assessing how well they serve the needs of their audience. They will harness and refine the unparalleled opportunity that the social web offers farm to truly understand communities' needs by listening well and listening often, and allowing the insights that they gather to directly influence every aspect of the strategic and tactical approaches that they control towards community-led management. The patient who is becoming more informed. These are the immense challenges that we are facing today in India. And as a marketeer, if we have to address them, for the last few years, it has been a tremendous challenge to overcome each one of this. And probably today, the digital and social media offers at least some solutions to these problems. A very targeted reach, one-on-one -on -one reach, is possible now through the digital medium. We can get insights for better strategy and communication, which was lacking earlier. We have immense audio visual integration, which we never had in so many years. The challenges are that pharma is highly regulated. Prescription products cannot directly communicate to patients and consumers. Rules and laws with respect to digital and social media are completely unclear. And US FDA guidelines have just about been drafted, but don't seem to be coming to full-fledged conclusion. Though we hear from uh, Mr. Andrew Strong that the EU guidelines are quite clear. When it comes to social media, people are conversing without any inhibition because there's nobody watching them there. And that's the place where you can get immense insights. And finally, the biggest challenge is to use all this technology within the regulatory guidelines of pharma. We know that. That's what is the hesitation from the industry to take the steps, next step. But I'd like to say that it is not the... It's, we are not trying to sell medicines to consumers. We are not trying to sell medicines directly to patients. That's not what we are trying to do or we should try to do. Nobody will do it for pharma. We understand that. What we need to do is we, we are creating trust. We are trying to build in healthy outcomes. We are trying to reach our target doctors to give them value from what we would want to give. And we are trying to create support systems for the patients and the doctors so that they can have better outcomes. That's the way it is. And if you understand that, then only you will be able to do it successfully. We as Global Health PR Partners, we have compiled the Global Guide to Pharma Marketing Course of which uh, we, uh, Media Medic is an author for the Indian and it's just the beginning. In this, we have given certain guidelines as to what can and can we cannot be done on, uh, on the traditional front as well as on the social media front as of now. But we will be updating this regularly to include more and more things as they come. We need to be very specific to our market if you want to do something in this country and in a collaborative way and in an extremely strategic way. You cannot start doing digitally by saying I want to have an XYZ activity. It cannot be activity based. It has to be very strategic. It has to be objective. If you look at the top 100 brands, 44 of the 100 brands, uh, have emerged in the last 10, months, 10 years into the top 100. And all 44 of these 44 are distinguished by the fact that they have almost no spend on advertising. So interestingly, we grew up in a world where corporate told us the more you spend on advertising, the bigger your brand will become. And we grew into a world where the rule has become the less you spend on advertising, the bigger the brand will become. When did you ever see a Google ad? When did you ever see an ad for Facebook? When did you ever see an ad for Red Bull? When did you ever see an ad for Red Bus? When did we ever see an ad for Twitter? When did we ever see an ad for eBay? When did we ever see an ad for Amazon? When did we ever see an ad for Ferrari? When did we ever see an ad for Starbucks? It, even more rational. So something has really and radically changed the world of marketing. Once upon a time, it was believed that you spend a lot of money to build a brand. Today, it's quite the opposite. The less the money you spend, the bigger the brand will become. I was just reading, today there was a news release that we cost 200 million users on the internet every day. Imagine that. How many people read the Times of India every day? What do you think? What's, this, what's the national circulation of Times of India? 
seven million. What's the monthly readership of Facebook in India? Ninety-one million. What's the monthly viewership of Star Plus in India? Thirty-two million. What's the monthly viewership of YouTube in India? Fifty-one million. Once upon a time, people used to say, "Box digital, what niche? Chhoda bota cheese hai." Today, television is niche, print is niche, digital is the biggest mass market in the world. Finally, all of you in the pharmaceutical industry, you all make powders and you know put a bunch of chemicals together, and there's a tablet and the powder and there's a liquid, right? And you think that that's what it is. That's just not about that. It's what what are, what is the impact you're able to create in somebody's mind? And why would somebody pick your bottle over somebody else's bottle? And your powder over somebody else's powder? And your session over somebody else's session? And it's got nothing to do with the classical theories of marketing. The third P that was always talked about was placement. Well, we have this amazing distribution ability and so on and so forth. Uh, the interesting thing is, on a, on a macro note, if it, anything you put on your on the net today is available in 197 countries. So you can be global today. That's a good news. The bad news is everybody in those 197 countries is gunning for your customer, which is bad news. So every market is global. Every market is flat. So all of this thinking that digital is small, offline is big, digital is growing, and digital is already grown. It's already much bigger than you think, and much bigger than the world level. But if you go beyond doctors, and that's where it starts getting interesting, you now can also empower your consumers with knowledge. And you know that every one of your doctors has come back and said, "Sorry, pretty consumer, Google got it right." You go check out a doctor and say, "Okay, I'm going to let me see what Google says. Let me see the rating of the doctor. Let me go to another doctor." You cross check your first doctor, the second doctor, the second doctor, and the third doctor. That's consumers now have power. You can either choose to ignore this, or you can choose to give them more power and say, "Let me empower you even more. Let me give you even more information."